Right, okay guys, welcome to another video. Um, yeah, this video has been in production for probably the best part of two months. Um, and um, this is me literally just getting out to finishing it. Now what's kind of made this video quite appropriate at this point in time is uh, the death of Sir Clive Sinclair. Now as we all know, Sir Clive Sinclair, I would almost say single-handedly, changed the face of uh, home computing in the UK. He brought computers to the masses. And uh, with that, you know, we, ha we had the uh, the Z80, ZX81, and uh, obviously the ZX Spectrum. Now, suffice to say, the ZX Spectrum had some quintessentially British games. Games that I think simply would not exist um, would not have come from any other country. So what I wanted to do is, I wanted to take a look at, I don't know how many there are, um, I wanted to take a look at a number of games that came out on the 8-bit machines that, as I say, were quintessentially British. So, let's have a wee look. So, kicking things off, this is the, the first of a number of games by Microgen. This is Automania. Now, you play the part of a Wally Week, and your job is to assemble parts of a car, uh, build a car, and then you move on to the next, uh, on the next level. And that's not the way to play it. <laughs> now, you'll see here there's a number of references to sort of British stuff. There's a, a kettle at the top left. Now you could probably argue and say, well that could be any country, but uh, I don't know. I think that looks like an Argos special. And you've also at the top right there, you've got a BP can of uh, petrol. And he's even got his little flat cap, which is synonymous with the British uh, workman. If you've never played this game, you absolutely have to. This was, I think this is the first microgen game, but it certainly was the first microgen game to feature this little uh, character. Uh, it's great fun, it really is. I'm not quite sure what the relevance of uh, the Laurel and Hardy theme tune is to this game, but uh, yeah. Now you're not going to see it in this video, but you're I think you're building a British car. So yeah, Automania. Right, the good old British pastime. Going to the pub and getting absolutely rushed before staggering your way home, avoiding prostitutes, policemen and skinheads. What could be more British? We've all done it. Now, saying that, when I was putting this video together, there was a game called... Was it... Brew Burts or something like that. It was based around beer in the American game, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think that involved you getting rat arsed and having to stagger home to your bed. <laughs> and of course, what makes it even more British? It's got stuff like Roll Out The Barrels. And Lily the Pink. There we go. I'm going to... I'm safely home. Now I can uh, sleep off my hangover. Before doing it all over again. Right, sticking with Microgen. This is Everyone's a Wally. I know what that tune is, but I can't for the life of me remember what the uh, the name is. Yeah, so here you go again. You play Wally Week, the little guy with the flat cap. Looks very much like Andy Cap, which was a a very early British uh, sort of cartoon that used to appear in the magazines or in the newspapers, I should, should say. And this this game, you you can play the part of I think three or four, four or five actually different characters. You've got the punk. I can't remember what his name is. Now, the punk scene, I would say, was a very British thing. 
I know you did get punks in America, but let's be honest, the punks were... The, the forefathers of punk is generally regarded as being uh, the Sex Pistols. So for that, for that, uh, for that reason, yep, punks will always be British. So yeah, this has got things like iconic stuff like uh, it's got a church there. It's got uh, a telephone box. Colour Clash Central. Nothing wrong with that. This this uh, this one's on the spectrum, by the way. There we go. BP, another reference to BP, Petrol Station. I mean, that house just looks like an English... Uh, it's like the type of house you're going to get in an English village. And there's a little dude, I can't remember who he is, with the uh, little knitted, uh, knitted bonnet. <laughs> and the Red Lion, of course, the most common pub name in the UK, apparently. So yeah, again, it's not a game you would get anywhere outside the UK. Right, next one, Football Manager by Addictive Games. Now, this is on the C64 I'm playing. This is released by uh, the Addictive Games program by Kevin Toms. In this game, you have got to take on the part of a football manager managing one of uh, yeah, 64, 64 uh, football teams, all English, which used to annoy me. Now you'll notice this is not called Soccer Manager, it's Football Manager. This was one of the earliest games. You can see there all the names, Ian Rush, Charlie Nicholas, Norman Whiteside, Ray Wilkins. These were all, uh, these are footballers from the 80s. Very, very simple game. Basically pick your team uh, and then you just watch a series of highlights. Now I lost a lot of time in this game. One particular night, my mate Don came up to the house and we basically sat and we played this right through the night. It is indeed, it, sorry, it is indeed addictive. <laughs> now, I don't know if there's any games like this that would be based around the baseball, American football, but yeah, like I say, this is just, you know, some people say... Um, Britain is the home of football. I don't know if that's true, because we're certainly not the best at it anyway, especially if you're Scottish. Garum's being bunny. How English can you get? Get it in you. I don't even know what team I am, actually. <laughs> I've forgotten. This particular game did spawn quite a few sequels. I think there was Football Manager 2. I think there was even uh, Football Manager World Cup Edition. Yeah, you go Scunthorpe, Colchester, Hartypool, Port Vale and Torquay in Hull. Gordon McQueen, he was uh, a Scottish player. He was actually one of the, the few decent Scottish players back then. Played for uh, Manchester United, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is simplicity itself, but like I said, it was a fantastic game. And in my opinion, this game could only have originated from uh, the UK. Right, next one. You probably know the, you know the, the, the group Frankie Goes to Hollywood um, by Ocean Software. Yep, it was like a video game based on uh, the 80s group. Now you play the part of basically nobody, which is why you're just uh, an outline. And you're, you're basically running back and forwards between houses. I can't remember what it's called. I think the, the, the town you live in is it something like Dullsville, something like that. And again, all the graphics of the house are all very British things. I mean, look at the wallpaper. You've got fireplaces. I 
Now, despite its basic look, yeah, how English does that look? <laughs> With its uh, T, t sorry, TV aerials as well. There's a little phone in the wall. See, so, no, I don't remember. I don't remember many British. Uh, I don't remember people in the UK putting their phone in the wall. That's an American thing. So that's a bit of a. They've dropped the ball there. Yeah, look at that. That could be your granny's living room. With the big comfy seat and your granny always had a little uh, bit of cloth over the back of it. There's your your 20 inch TV. Flowers on the table. Don't ask me to try and explain the point of this game because I don't know. But take it from me, this got a a zap crash, or was that a zap gold medal? Yeah, if you ever watch Coronation Street, you've got the uh, the three flying ducks, which was a really popular uh, ornament back in the 70s. And you've got your carriage clock on top of the uh, the fireplace. I'd probably say out of all the games I'm going to let you see tonight, this is probably the one that is, again, it is, it is completely based around... Uh, 1980s, 1970s, 1980s Britain. How could we leave this one out? Manny Minor. This was Matthew Smith's first game. You play the part of Minor Willie and he's attempting to uh, get home, I think. Now, this game came out probably pretty much around the minor strike in the UK. Um, I think it was 84, 1984, something like that. Um, there was a, the miners went on strike and it was, uh, there was quite a fierce kind of debate between Arthur Scargill, who was the miners, uh, he was the leader of the miners party and he was having a going head to head with Margaret Thatcher who was, uh, well, suffice to say she wasn't particularly popular in the UK unless you had loads of money. Yeah, only Matthew Smith, a British programme, could come up with a game like this where you're playing the part of a miner, you're jumping over penguins on ice skates, collecting what I think is tennis rackets. Now I know you're thinking, well, oh, wait a minute, me meister. Things like uh, Minor 2049 and Bounty Bob, they were American. I know that. But, uh, yeah, the, the graphics in this particular game, just, to me, they reek Britain. Britain in the 1980s. This was also one of the first games that I can recall on the Spectrum that had in-game music. That wasn't really something that you got. If you've never played this game, where have you been? You really need to owe it to yourself. Never mind bloody Sonic the Hedgehog, you need to play Manic Miner. And the tune is, is it the Dance of the Fairies? Or I can't remember what it's called. There you go. What game, what video game has toilet seats in it? Now, if you don't know who the wee egg character is in the middle, that is uh, that is based on a, an English programmer called Eugene Evans. He was a teenage programmer for a software house that goes by the name of Imagine Software. They were one of the biggest, earliest computer games, or computer companies, I should say, in the UK. Um, they sold a lot of really awful games, but they self-promoted themselves so much, they made so much money in such a short space of time, that apparently even the cleaners were driving uh, Porsches. I would take that with a pinch of salt, but uh, yeah. He was, uh, Eugene uh, Evans famously had, I think it was a Lamborghini or something, and he hadn't even passed his driving test.
And to finish off, you get crushed with a Doc Martin boot. That is Manic Miner. Right, next one. Back to mining shenanigans. Um, wanted Monty Mole. And this is on the C64, this one. It was on the Spectrum as well. Yeah, to read the, the advert, Wanted Monty Mole facing a long, sorry, a long cold winter, Monty Mole makes a daring coal snatching raid to his local South Yorkshire pit. Grabbing a miner's bucket, he heads into the darkness on his illicit escapade, soon to realise that the flu may have been a better choice. Alas, there's no turning back. Onward to do battle with flying pickets, mammal-eating fish, trundling coal crushers, roaming coal drills, filling his bucket, dodging the disappearing floor. Yeah, I think that could only have been made in the UK. Now this was the sequel to Monty Mo, and this is much better to be fair, this is Monty on the run. And this has got the best uh, Sid tune ever. Now the instructions for this one, super fit and desperate for freedom, Monty makes his daring escape from Scudmore Prison, hounded by the bastions of law and order, our frightened hero finds, excuse me, that was my dinner there, finds refuge with the criminal underworld who offer him the chance to breathe fresh air and bask in the sunlight once again. Moving from safe house to hideout to underground lair, Monty must select five correct elements of his freedom kit from many he's offered and not miss out on the hidden gold coins that will make him a mole of leisure. Yeah again, you've got the sinker C5 at the bottom there. But this is a Commodore 64 one if you don't already know. Trust me, the Spectrum could not do a sit tune like this. But both are almost identical, and uh, they're, they're wonderful games. I really don't want to talk too much over this one, I just want to let you enjoy the absolutely fantastic Sitchin by Rob Hubbard. But again, this just, <laughs> this just oozes Britishness, it really does. Pints of beer as enemies. I mean, Manic Miner was the first, one of the first sort of Spectrum platformers and it really, uh, it just, it made the genre, pop, uh, genre really popular. And we got a lot of uh, kind of copies of that being one of them. Right, back to Microgen, Pajama Rama. Yep, you're playing the part of, again, I think it's Wally Week, I think that's what he's called. And you've basically got to, you're actually dreaming, and you've got to solve various puzzles. Most of them are picking up something, taking it somewhere else, dropping it down, picking up something else, and then taking it somewhere else. Um, you've basically got to get out your dream and wake up. But again, it just, it's, the graphics, they just, they reek Britishness. <laughs> Very, very humdrum. I mean, the water bucket, the plant pot, scissors. And this is the Spectrum version. I did have it on the C64. Um, both are excellent. But again, if I was going to play it, I would always go for the Spectrum one. There's just something, something again, it's just, I don't know. Very spectrum esque, whether it's the the minimal sound and the colour clash, <laughs> but it's just something that really. Uh, well, there's an American football helmet, so yeah, okay, we'll 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 give you that. That's not particularly British. T is there anything more United Kingdom than a cup of tea? I don't think there is.
And that is your typical bathroom with fluorescent light. There you go, that's you in bed and you're basically, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to wake yourself up. Yeah, pyjama rama. Right, this is a cracker. Revenge and Mutant Camels by Lamasoft, programmed by Jeff Minter. Now, I would love to show you this entire game, but I think there's something like 32 levels. This has got so many uh, iconic baddies that are really set in the 80s, as you'll soon see. So, I can't even speak properly. Soon see. Now, this came out 84, I think it was, right in the middle of what was kind of a Cold War between, uh, you know, the UK was part of NATO and you had uh, the Warsaw Pact, hence the sort of neutronium status. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of kind of pointers towards uh, nuclear wars and stuff like that. Raining cats and dogs, is that not a, a British phrase? I think it probably is. Now, by the way, if you're thinking I'm getting through this game very quick, I've actually got a cheat mode on, just so you can see quite a few levels. So there's Jeff Minter himself. Manic Minter doesn't look anything like him, but anyway. The idea of the game is to basically advance, I think it's, uh, is it five kilometres? No, seven kilometres, you can see it at the top, you've got to advance seven kilometres and then you move on to the next level. What's this one? Wacky Waiters, I think it is. Yeah, again, there's nothing much more British than a walking stick. Lovely game, this. I mean, for an early game. Now, for a, a game that's, I don't know, how old is it? 30 years? 40 years old? Um, it actually received an update about two months ago for Jeff Minter. He basically improved the uh, the sprite detection and he also allowed you to move in mid-air. There you go. Yep, this kiosk is nuclear-free. So yeah, you've got the little uh, C&D logo. Plus you've got the British phone boxes. An utterly, utterly bizarre game, this. You would never... You would never get this game anywhere other than a UK uh, software company. These little spaceships, they were in the original uh, Attack of the Mutant Camels. Another early, early game, but definitely worth playing. Right, and is there anything more British than going to the, going to the seaside on holiday? Yep, before we had package uh, holidays to uh, Benidorm and Mallorca, the average holiday for your average uh, middle class, or not middle class, working class family was going to the seaside, be it Bridlington, um, Blackpool, Scarborough. And this, this, this one is slightly political um, because you're basically trying to uh, collect plutonium that's uh, gathered on the beach called Rotaway Beach. Quite a bizarre game this, I don't quite know what the wee guy is that's trying to kill you all the time. But uh, yeah, this uh, sort of nods its head to the, the traditional uh, 1930s, 40s, 50s uh, postcards that always had some buxom wench with a little old man. Um, <laughs> They were mega popular back in the day. If you don't believe me, ask your granny. It's not a particularly good game, this. It looks it looks fun, but it's not that great to play. But again, it's only a game that I think could only ever come out in the UK. You've been pursued by what I'm assuming is a jellyfish of some sort. You've got your radiation meter at the bottom. Uh, 
And that was Seaside Special by Task Set. Right, next up is School Days by Microsphere. Now, you play the part of a, a little uh, schoolboy called Eric, a troublesome schoolboy, and your task is to steal a report card out of the school safe, um, which is located in the staff room, basically to avoid getting into trouble with your parents. Now, to do this, you must collect the combination letters of the safe and write them on the blackboard. Now, this is obviously not an easy task, seeing as one letter of the four-letter combination is held by each of the teachers in the school. Um, the way to do this is to, uh, in order to get them to tell you their number, you must first make all of the shields scattered around the school flash by hitting them or firing a catapult at them. Once all the shields are flashing, you then have to knock the teacher over with your catapult, which will cause them to tell you their letter. Now, yeah, this uh, <laughs> this school, the school that features in this game, is very, very, it's reminiscent of my school, my high school back in the day. It's got all your stereotypical uh, kids. It's got the school bully. It's got the school SWAT, complete with glasses. And uh, yeah, you've got your old geography teacher with his uh, his cloak. You've got the, I don't know if that was a biology teacher, that teacher at the bottom left with the glasses, he looks exactly like my old biology teacher. It's a good fun game to play. Um, it's what made it, uh, what made it, well not so much popular, it was one of the, uh, it was the game that a lot of uh, shops like WH Smith in the UK, they used to always have, they would have a spectrum in their shop window and they would always have this game running because of a demo mode. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, a quintessential slice of British gaming. Now, if you've followed my channel for any length of time, you'll probably know I love this game, Super Pipeline, again by Task Set. Now, you'll see a bit of a pattern forming here. A lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, Task Set games were quintessentially British. You had your uh, Microgen games as well, your Everyone's a Wally, etc. And this game here is, I can't even remember the name of the character, considering it's one of my favourite games. You play the part of a plumber, and the idea is you've got to keep the pipeline open. And you do that by uh, basically shooting, for some odd reason, you've got a laser. <laughs> You've got the ants, you've got the little dude with green uh, trousers and they'll climb up the ladder and then they'll either drop onto the, the pipeline and if you come into contact with them, you die. Or that little dude there, if he gets to the top, he'll drop a little, I don't know what it is, a nail or something that will basically uh, block the pipe. So yep, yeah, it's again, it's a quintessentially British game, you've got to keep a pipeline open. There was a sequel to this game imaginatively called Super Pipeline 2. See what they've done there? Even the music in this game, um, that particular one was the theme tune to uh, the South Bank show, which was a, it was an early 80s uh, art program. I used to watch it back in the day and I couldn't understand it. A very, very highbrow um, program. There, Mr. Lobster Boy. Now you can't kill him, or you can, but you've got to shoot him from behind. There's that wee guy there. He's going to drop things. So now what I need to do is nick down and unblock the pipe. <laughs> you get a little leg cut scene. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that is super pipeline. You need to check that one out. Right, if there's a more British game than Trashman, um, then I'd like to know. The only thing is, Trashman, I would say uh, you always talk about, the, I don't know, you don't call it a trash man, you call it a rubbish man in the UK. But for whatever reason, they wanted to call it trash man. So yeah, but you play the part of a dude who has got to empty bins. There's a little lorry coming up. So you carry the bin 
tip it into the thing like so, and then you return the bin to the garden. Quite fiddly to play, you've got to be exactly lined up. It is a kind of pseudo 3D, so you have to really be yeah, trying to just see exactly where you're going can be a wee bit awkward. But yeah, this is... This takes place in your average English street. There we go, Montague Road. I don't know why they didn't call it Bin Man, because that's what you... Trash. You always think America when you say trash. In the UK, it's rubbish. See, I don't know why they didn't call it Bin Man. Perhaps new generation software wanted to call it Trash Man to appeal to the American market, but there again, the Spectrum wasn't really a thing in America, so interesting. We sadly... Uh, Malcolm Evans, who programmed this, he passed away a few years ago, so I can't can't even ask him why it was called Trash Man. But yeah, there's no two ways about it. This is <laughs> this could only have been programmed in the UK. There's a dog going to chase me, I think. Too many complaints, and I've been fired. Right, and the last game that's going to appear in this video is The Young Ones. Now, The Young Ones was a, quite a radical uh, comedy that came out early 80s. Um, it was written by Ben Elton, who was... He was a bit of a, a socialist, suffice to say. Um, and, I mean, I have to say, the humour that came out from this programme was brilliant. Watching this as a kid, as a teenager of the early 80s, you felt like you were being quite naughty watching this because you had, again, four stereotypical characters. You had Rick, who was a socialist, or communist, whatever you want to call it. You had Neil, who was a hippie. You can see Neil at the top there, the long hair. You had Vivian, who was a punk rocker. And then you had Neil, the cool person. And basically, they frequented a house and it was just slapstick. Stuff was always going on. There was a sequel to this. Well, not a sequel, a kind of informal, uh, unofficial follow-up called Bottom, which uh, starred the character that played Vivian the Punk and also uh, Rick Mail, who played... Uh, who played... I can't even remember his name in this. Uh, anyway, yeah, this was, this was the game of the young ones. It's a god-awful game. Um, I mean... <sighs> I don't even know how they could have... Why they wanted to make a video game based on Young Ones. It's a hilarious comedy programme. But it's a god-awful game. Yeah, you're, it's sort of uh, sort of an adventure game. Yeah, you get to kind of influence what they do. You've got a series of, sort of uh, actions. You can walk, you can talk, you can pick things up. But trust me, you don't want to play this game. If you've never heard of Young Ones, go and watch the TV series. Um, and don't waste your time with this. So anyway, listen, that is 15 games which are quintessentially British. So yeah, let me know what you think of the video. And as always guys, thank you very, very much for watching.